Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we're going to be talking about time zones on the earth. This is our introduction video and the follow-up video will go through some worked examples ranging from simple questions to some complex questions. This particular video is aimed at our senior mathematics students right across Australia in Queensland, Western Australia, Victoria and Tasmania, depending on which syllabus you're studying under. In this particular video, we're going to look at firstly what a time zone is, what is GMT, which is one of the abbreviations you may see in your textbook. We're going to look at what an international dateline is, what Australia's time zones are, what daylight savings is, and what UTC is. So firstly, let's get started and talk about what a time zone is. Well, we need to consider that we are living on a great big sphere. Our Earth is a great big sphere in space and it rotates around its axis once every 24 hours, or we call that one day. So at different times during that rotation, different parts of the Earth are experiencing different times of the day. Some people, for example myself, it's evening here in Brisbane, but in other parts of the Earth, it's morning or midday or even the middle of the night. So the Earth is experiencing different times in all different parts of the day. Now, for a very long time around the world, Different cities and different countries established what time they were experiencing based on where the sun was at its highest point in the day. And they would set their clocks to that on a regular basis and that became 12 noon. Now in 1878, a Canadian by the name of Sir Sanford Fleming proposed that we could split the earth into 24 time zones, one for each hour of the day. And that that was then decided that each of those time zones would represent 15 degrees of longitude because there's 360 degrees in a circle. So if we divide that circle 24 ways into 24 time zones, that means in a segment of longitude, every city and country in that space would be experiencing the same time. And that's a 15 degree length. Now, a little bit later, there was a very important conference in Washington, D.C. in the United States where it was decided to mark Greenwich in London, which is in England, as zero degrees longitude, and then also to set all our time zones based off Greenwich when we count our time zones backwards and forwards based on that central place. Now, you might be wondering why on earth Greenwich in London? I've never heard of the place. Well, in Greenwich is the Royal Observatory, and at that particular point in history, the United Kingdom was very important around the world for things in all matters of science, engineering, and mathematics. And it was considered to be quite a centre of learning in this Royal Observatory. So that's where we have made our centre, and it's remained with us historically ever since. Now, Greenwich Mean Time, mean being the average, is where we get the symbol GMT, our abbreviation from. So we're measuring all our time on the planet from that central point. Now, we've got different kinds of time zones. Obviously, Greenwich in London is considered GMT zero. That's our ground zero, as you were, for time. Now, any times that are positive, GMT plus one, mean that those cities or countries are ahead of London or the United Kingdom, which is considered to be zero. So, for example, if it was 8 a.m. in London and you lived in Rome, which is to the east of London, your time would be GMT plus one, or it would be 9 a.m. on the same day, 8 a.m. plus one hour. So that means that there's a one hour time difference, and you're going to be hearing this expression time differences across the two videos that I'm going to be creating. So there's a one hour time difference between London and Rome. Now, something very important to remember is that all zones with eastern longitudes, that means they are east of the United Kingdom and east of that prime meridian that runs through London, have a positive GMT. So if you're ever told that something has an eastern longitude and you're asked what kind of GMT it would have, you know it's going to be positive. For example, Brisbane has a longitude of 153 degrees east of the prime meridian and our time zone is 10 hours ahead of the United Kingdom, GMT plus 10. Also, we have negative time zones where GMT is negative. For example, GMT minus 3 and that would mean those cities or countries would be behind London. So what that would mean, for example, if we've got New York City where the GMT is negative 4, 
If it was 8 a.m. in London, then in, if you're in New York City, it would be GMT minus 4 or 4 a.m. on the same day because 8 a.m., if you go back 4 hours, that's 4 a.m. So their time difference there is four hours and the word difference implies subtraction or takeaway and that's why we take that away from our central time also because all of the eastern time zones the eastern longitudes all have positive gmt so therefore the opposite if you've got a western longitude then you've got a gmt that's negative and so you can see on here on this map from google maps that new york is definitely west of greenwich so therefore it has a negative longitude in fact its longitude is 74 degrees west so the gmt is negative let's talk a little bit now about the international date line now, this was a very important conference in 1884 because this is when we also decided to set up the International Date Line, which is an arbitrary line that's drawn through the Pacific Ocean. It's not literally drawn. If you go to that place in the ocean, you won't see anything special there. Um, it's drawn on maps, and it's exactly 180 degrees from the Prime Meridian, which means it's exactly halfway around the world from the United Kingdom. Now, initially, that was a straight line, and that marks the place on the Earth that experiences midnight on a new calendar day. So any point on that international date line is going to be exactly 12 hours ahead of Greenwich, London, which means on that international date line, when it's New Year's Eve and the new day rolls over, London has to wait another 12 hours before they can celebrate New Year's Eve. Now, in the early 1900s and thereafter, they've had to make some small adjustments to that international date line because that line passed through some countries. And that can create difficulties when you're trying to do business with people that are literally just a stone's throw away and you're in the same country or even just towns next door to one another, but they're experiencing a different day of the week. You can imagine that would make trade difficult if it's Sunday in one place and Monday in the other. So as the years have passed, different countries have also made decisions that they wanted to be on one side of the date line. So that you can see that date line is no longer a straight line. In fact, it's got some quite wonky different adjustments that's made to it, particularly around our Pacific Islands. Some of the Pacific Islands traditionally made the USA their trading partner and wanted to be on the same side as the date line of, as the USA. However, as times progressed, they have become stronger trading partners with parts of Asia and Australia. So it's made more sense for them to be trading on the same day and not have to worry about things like weekends when businesses are closed, for example. So once again, recall that that line marks the start of a new day. So if you are on the eastern side of that date line and you cross over to the western side of that date line, that means you skip back exactly 24 hours. You could literally be on one side, one centimeter on the western side of the eastern side of that line and you skip over a centimeter to the other side and you've changed days. And I think there are a couple of islands where you can actually straddle and stand on either side of the international date line. Now, because of the direction that the Earth rotates in, the reason why this, the countries on the west of the line are experiencing the new days is because of the way that the world rotates. And that's these countries here. These are the first countries in the world that experience that new day. They always celebrate New Year's Eve first. So that would include places like New Zealand, parts of um, Asia like Korea and Japan and Australia. Now, it's always a really good idea to have a bit of idea about geography. So... It's also a good idea to know that those immediately on the eastern side are going to have that new day last, and that's places like Alaska and the west coast of the United States. They're always going to be the last ones in the world to celebrate a new year. And having a good idea of basic earth geography can help you when you're trying to solve some problems with time just to be able to check your answer and make sure that it's logical. For example, knowing Roughly, which countries are in similar time zones to Australia will help you if you have to work out whether one country is ahead of or behind another just by understanding how it works. So Australia is one of the first countries in the world that will experience a new day, followed by parts of um, Eastern Europe and also parts of Asia like India and Thailand and parts of the Middle East. Then roughly about 12 hours behind 
is the UK and all of the rest of Europe and a lot of Africa as well. They're pretty much 180 degrees around the world from that international date line and they're sitting roughly around that prime meridian. So they're going to be 12 hours behind on that start of the new day. And then we hit the United States, Canada, Central America and South America and they're our last countries in the world. So this is a really good idea to have a bit of this basic idea of geography because if you're asked to find a time difference, for example, between Sydney and say Montreal in Canada, then you know that they're definitely going to be behind us. And having that general basic idea will make sure that you have logical answers and that you are able to check your work using logic. So let's have a quick chat now about Australia's time zones. We've actually got three longitude lines that pass through Australia. Now, if we were to set our time zones based on longitude lines, that would mean we would have four time zones because of those three longitude lines. Now, that's not always going to be practical to base your time zones off the longitude lines, and I'll show you why in a moment. Consider, for example, Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Now, we've circled those there. Toowoomba's not actually shown on this map, but Toowoomba's not that far from Brisbane, and yet they exist on the other side of that longitude line. Now, it, they're in the same state as Brisbane and the Gold Coast, and they are considerable trading partners with businesses. People do travel between Brisbane and Toowoomba to go to work and vice versa. So it makes sense for them to be in the same time zone. It wouldn't make sense at all for them to be different time zones. And consider places as well like Sydney and Canberra. A lot of politicians that base themselves in Canberra um, do commute backwards and forwards from Sydney and also people between those two different cities. Well, you can see that a they are in technically different time zones because of that longitudinal line. So there's sometimes not a lot of logic to making your longitude lines your time zones. And that's why in Australia, we actually follow time zones based on our natural borders. So we have Eastern Standard Time for all of our eastern states. We've got Central Standard Time for our middle states and the Northern Territory. And Western Australia is in our Western Standard Time Zone. So what this means is that if you're in the green zone, you are one hour ahead of the pink zone, and the pink zone is one hour ahead of our purple zone. Other countries do this as well. In fact, China, the biggest country in the world, has five longitude lines passing through it, and to make things easy for them, they have only one time zone. That can be quite confusing. You would imagine if you lived in different parts of China, the sun's coming up um, Technically, when you look at your clock, sun rises a lot later in the day. And in some cities, it makes it quite difficult because the sun's going down at three in the afternoon because of the way that they've created these artificial time zones. Because the sun, the planet's still moving around the sun and experiencing darkness at different times. So the length of the day is kind of skewed in places like China. So let's talk about daylight savings. Now, different parts of the world experience different amounts of sunlight depending on how close they are to the equator or to the North and South Pole. For example, um, the closer that you are to the North or the South Pole, places like Northern Russia, places like North of Canada and Alaska, they are actually quite close to the North Pole. So they have very, very short days in winter. And what I mean by that is the amount of sunlight that they experience during the day is very short. And in fact, some of those countries have whole days and weeks where the sun doesn't come up at all because of the tilt of the world. The opposite happens for them. In the summertime, they have very long days. In fact, parts of the United Kingdom in the summertime, the sun doesn't even go down till 10 p.m. at night. And I've experienced that myself as well when I was in the bottom of New Zealand, in the bottom of the South Island. The sun didn't go down there in the summertime till 10 p.m. at night as well, which is quite an unusual experience. Now, some cities like Sydney and Melbourne often choose to make adjustments to their clocks at the beginning of summer to take advantage of those longer days. And what that means is that they adopt something called daylight savings time, which means that they can spend extra family time and then because their clocks have changed, they're not actually experiencing a sunset until 9 or 10 p.m., which gives them far more time to do things like wash the car and mow the lawn after work. Now, they don't actually change into a different time zone. That's very important to note. They still remain in their same time zone. So if they're in GMT plus 5, they'll still remain GMT plus 5. But they're adding an hour onto their day 
with daylight savings. And I'm going to explain to you in a moment how that works. So when a, a city chooses to switch to daylight savings, that means at the beginning of summer, they're actually going to physically change the time on their clocks so that it's an hour forward. So for example, usually they would do that around bedtime. So if you went to bed at nine o'clock at night, you would simply change the clock to 10 p.m. and then leave it like that until daylight savings finishes. To switch back from daylight savings at the end of summertime, you take an hour off. So for example, if you are going to bed at nine o'clock, you're gonna switch that clock back to 8 p.m. when you go to bed. Typically what that means is that people then just stay up an extra hour. But if you're like me, you would enjoy the extra hour of sleep. Now, Western Australia and Queensland don't adopt daylight savings time. We don't have time today, pardon the pun, to actually explain why. But it's important if you're in Western Australia and Queensland to understand how daylight savings works, especially if you've got family interstate and you want to make a phone call and you don't want people to be in bed when you make the call, or if you're dealing with businesses that do adopt it because, for example, if you're trying to call one of your telcos that closes at a certain time, and then you go to ring them and discover it's daylight savings. That can be very frustrating. So it's good to know how it works. It's also good to know how it works because you may have to add an hour in your exam if you've got a question that includes daylight savings. Now, one of our last things we're going to talk about today is UTC. It stands for Coordinated Universal Time. You would think that the acronym should be CUT, not UTC, but it's UTC. Now, some textbooks I've noticed don't include anything about UTC at all, but it is part of the Queensland syllabus, so it's important to know what it is. Now, we've talked about GMT. The GMT of any place on Earth is actually going to be exactly the same as its UTC. So you can almost think about them interchangeably. So whenever you see UTC, don't panic. It's pretty much the same as GMT. So, for example, with Brisbane, we're GMT plus 10. That means we're also UTC plus 10. Now, you might think, well, why are there two? Well, GMT is all about the time zones, but UTC is all about true time based on the Earth's rotation. UTC is all about using high-precision atomic clocks, and there's a picture of one there as their basis. And, in fact, time on the internet, if you're like me and you like to set your watch off the internet time, you're actually going off that um, coordinated universal time. It's also used in aviation. So there are key purposes for UTC time. It is considered to be more accurate and precise. However, for your purposes with your syllabus, just think of them interchangeably between GMT and UTC. Well, that's all we have time for in today's video, but we do have one more video coming up in our series on time zones and in this particular one we're going to calculate some time differences using UTC, GMT and daylight savings. I'm also going to show you how to calculate time differences using a city's coordinates of longitude and latitude and that's an important skill you need to know as well. Not every textbook covers that but we will cover that in the next video. We're also going to look at some complex questions that you may find in an exam so that video is going to range from simple to complex questions. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, do tune in for part two when we go through those complex questions. It'd be also a great idea if you could like and subscribe to the channel and also follow us on Facebook. Have a lovely day.